and I'm with the Runway Project and Optima Business Bootcamp. How are you all doing today? Yeah. Great. Um, Porvi, do you mind if we um, start by just kind of getting a sense for who's in the room? Yeah, that sounds yeah. great. Yeah. How many of you in the room um, come from organizations that lend to entrepreneurs? Great. Um, how many of you in the room come from organizations that provide funding to organizations that lend to entrepreneurs? Um, how many of you in the room are entrepreneurs yourself? Okay. Um, did I miss any categories here? Did you miss yeah. anyone? Did we miss anyone? What do you do? Working at a nonprofit. Okay, okay. excellent. Excellent. Um, well, just wanted to get a better sense for who's in the room, and um, today we're going to talk a little bit about the Runway Project and the work that we've been doing here in Oakland and how we're expanding the Runway Project um, to other locations throughout the country. Um, how many of you have heard of the, the Runway Project before? Great. That's like half of the room. That's really <laughs> exciting to, to hear. Um, well, the Runway Project, just by, for a little bit of background, is a nonprofit organization. It was founded by a lady named Jessica Norwood, um, who's out of Mobile, Alabama. She's an African-American <laughs> woman who is a Bali Fellow and a Nathan Cummings Fellow. And she was seeing um, not just the racial wealth gap and statistics, but you know also what was going on in the South with like Hurricane Katrina and how um, the people who were devastated by Hurricane Katrina you know, we're really hanging on by a thread um, beforehand and didn't have the assets and resources um, to, to carry through and reestablish themselves after the hurricane. And, you know, that um, she was looking, you know, deeper into that and seeing, well, that's the case everywhere with African American entrepreneurs. And, you know, with the, the stats of the racial wealth gap, you've probably all heard them. Um, there, you know, there's something like 143,000 um, is the average wealth for a white family, and 11,000 and declining is the average wealth for a black family. And so, when when people need to access resources to get through a disaster like Hurricane <coughs> Katrina, or access resources to buy a home or to start a business, there's no money there. Um, you know, people always, you know, say, "Well, go ask your friends and family." Um, who, what friends and family am I going to ask if, if I'm an African-American entrepreneur? And so the Runway Project is a, a nonprofit organization to um, really fix the broken infrastructure surrounding African-American entrepreneurs and to make sure that there is friendly capital that um, bridges that seed funding gap as well as services um, and access to markets uh, so that African-American <coughs> entrepreneurs can get off the runway and thrive. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the collaboration and how that came together here in Oakland, and um, and talk about you know what uh, what it's looked like here in Oakland and what our plans are for the future. And we also want to do something a little fun with you all and interactive, and you know kind of give you a case study of one of the entrepreneurs and see what you all come up with as far as how you would look at that entrepreneur as a potential borrower for an organization like Runway Project. So um, just by way of background, um, um, you know, I come from a business accelerator. I started Optima Business Bootcamp, which is a member-owned business accelerator that's based here in Oakland over at Impact Hub Oakland. We started about five and a half years ago. Um, with a small business program that supports um, early stage entrepreneurs in launching uh, and growing their business. And it's a year long, um, culturally relevant, rigorous curriculum where people are coming into a class once a week, they're building community, they're um, developing their business. And we were encountering the same problem that Jessica was encountering. And we, we'd have entrepreneurs who get to the end of that year long program and they would say, you know, I have a business plan. I know how, I know what capital is out there, um, but I still can't access that capital. And of course, I couldn't tell them to go access friends and family. Um, I couldn't tell them to go access um, bank debt because that wasn't going to work for them with their um, credit profiles and with the size of their business. 
Um, even with the CDFIs in the community, um, we're struggling to, to get funding there because many of the lending practices looked like the banks. And Kickstarter and Indiegogo and, and those options weren't viable because they're still more like friends and family type of financing. And so, you know, for, for a few years, you know, I was sitting there with a, a bunch of entrepreneurs that couldn't access funding to grow their business. And um, that's when Conda Mason, who um, founded Impact Hub, brought me into the conversation to um, collaborate with the Runway Project and Self Help Federal Credit Union around establishing the pilot program for the Runway Project here in Oakland. And I'll let Pervy talk about how Self Help came into this. Sure. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know um, Self Help, we are a community development credit union. Um, we were chartered in 2008. Um, and we've got branches um, all over California, from as far north as Chico to as far south as San Diego. We also have branches in Illinois and one in Wisconsin. Um, we're part of a broader sort of self-help family um, organization, which has a credit union based in Durham, uh, North Carolina, and, and branches on the East Coast as well. Um, we're a designated low-income credit union, and we're member-owned. So sort of in that cooperative spirit, we really believe that um, collective ownership creates opportunity. And um, that was one of the most exciting things to work with um, with Ronnie and, and the Runway Project folks. Um, as a credit union, we provide a lot of the same basic types of banking services and products that other financial institutions do. Um, things like checking accounts, savings accounts, um, small dollar loans to individuals. We have credit builder loans. We also do um, auto loans and mortgage loans. And we don't have a lot of experience with small business loans at the Federal Credit Union. Um, and we'll get to that, which um, is another reason for why our collaboration was so um, important. Um, as a financial institution, we're somewhat small in asset size. We're just over a billion dollars in assets, but as a community development credit union, we're quite large. Um, so that just gives a little bit of um, scale in terms of, of how we are. Um, and we you know, learned about the Runway Project through um, some of our colleagues actually all the way on the East Coast. And it just kind of goes to show that when a conversation gets started and there's passion and interest around something like this, it can really grow and build to something on the totally different side of the country. Um, and so I think, you know, given the headquarters that we've got here in Oakland and given some of the challenges that um, we see, um, you know, with um, the community building wealth here, particularly the things that Ronnie had raised around um, African American entrepreneurs, you know, not being able to have the capital to build and grow their businesses, we wanted to figure out a way to support um, this project through developing a loan product that would meet the needs of the entrepreneur and that would also manage the risk of our institution given that we are member owned and given that our members are generally low wealth families um, and individuals. Yeah, so we came together about three years ago, um, right before the SOCAP conference. Maybe you go to SOCAP and COCAP and everything. Um, so it's a crazy week, right? So we, we came together uh, as a collaborative, um, the Runway Project, Self-Help Federal Credit Union, and Optima Business Boot Camp about three years ago, um, around this time, around the SOCAP time, um, to really um, think about you know, how can we change um, this, this paradigm around how we lend to African American entrepreneurs. And um, so this was you know, a very interesting push and pull um, working with a credit union with established um, practices and processes um, and established loan products to um, really you know, think about how we could change some of the ways that these lending practices and lending products work in order to make them work um, for African American entrepreneurs. Have you, have um, any of you heard of the five C's of lending? Um, and, and so you all know about cap, you know, capacity, collateral, capital, character, conditions around a loan. And um, so many of the ways that traditional lenders look at these five C's don't work um, for the, the population that we were working with at Optima and, and many of the other organizations are working with. You know, when you think about capacity, that's traditionally looking at debt to income ratios. And a lot of the entrepreneurs that we were working with 
have some form of major debt. They've had to use credit cards to um, actually establish their business, buy their inventory, um, pay for certain you know, costs associated with their business. They may have um, student loan debt. If they've you know, had a chance to buy a house, they might have had issues with, um, with the mortgage on that house during the mortgage crisis, or if they assume the mortgage of a family member, they had an issue with that. And so, you know, we do, you know, look at those things, but we don't really, you know, spend a lot of focused time on them. Um, you know, from a collateral perspective, um, you know, a lot of the lending requires some form of capital or a UCC lien um, or a person, personal guarantee. Um, you know, we don't have any collateral requirements for the, the borrowers that we have. Um, they are coming in more on a character basis. So a lot of the work that we do is assessing um, the, the integrity of the entrepreneur, their motivations, um, the strength of um, their business and the training that they've gone through, the referrals that they might have been um, coming through as far as training programs and community organizations, um, community members. Um, we don't look at credit scores um, as, um, as a factor for determining credit or making decisions regarding um, the interest rate or the amount of loan because those credit scores are often wrecked by the very things that I just talked about a minute ago. And we do create a, a rigorous process in the fact that a business owner still needs to provide us with a business plan and you know, financial forecasts and they need to articulate what they're going to do with the money and, and be able to pitch their business to us. Um, but you know these are these are the ways in which we're we're sort of disrupting the due diligence process in in this lending cycle. Um, we also you know not just disrupting the due diligence process, but disrupting the, the product ex itself. Many of these loans out there are fixed loans, um, where you're paying principal and interest right away, um, like the month after you've received the money, which cuts into the cash flow that business owners are able to use to deploy in their business. So we worked with self-help to ensure that there was an interest only period of 18 months to two years, depending on the size of the loan, um, so that people could deploy that cash and actually grow their business. Um, we also you know, made sure that interest rate was significantly lower. A lot of the loans out there are you know, somewhere between the eight to 12% range. This is a 4% interest loan for African-American entrepreneurs with that interest only period. Um, we also you know, realized that the money is not just enough. We need you know, to make sure that there's access to markets. We need to make sure there's access to um, support. And so on the back end of this loan, we added the element of having um, free business advising. And that means meeting with a business advisor once a week in the first year of the loan. Um, every other week in the second and third year of the loan, and once a month in the fourth and the fifth year of the loan. And a lot of that business advising covers how do you deploy that loan, um, how do you make that you know, grow for your business, how do you start to get into a more rigorous way of looking at your business numbers, um, how do you hire people and get the support that you need to grow your business. Uh, you know, a whole host of things related to really getting from that launched and stuck phase to, to really growing the business. Mm -hmm. And the other piece of this is that we hold success circles where we bring a peer network of borrowers together um, twice a month where they share their challenges with each other, they share resources with each other, um, they brainstorm and help each other's businesses. And so this creates access to a community of peers and a support network so that business owners don't feel like they're alone because oftentimes they can't talk to their friends and family about their businesses. They, you know, they don't understand what they're going through. It also provides access to markets. So you know, when Facebook has a holiday market where they're you know, bringing in African-American entrepreneurs and one person knows and they're able to spread that out to the rest of the group. And, um, and so it really cultivates that relationship among, among the borrowers. Um, so there's a number of other things that we're, we're testing out um, as far as access to markets as well and that we're working with the Just Be Collective and their holiday market 
which is for um, black women entrepreneurs, but we've expanded it to include all of runway borrowers. Um, so these are the types of elements that we put in place to really disrupt this, the, the, the practices, the product, and the support that goes along with, um, with the loan. Mm -hmm. One of the most amazing things about working at a mission-driven financial institution is the opportunity to work with people like Ronnie and the folks that work at Runway Project who are really committed not just to providing an opportunity for disadvantaged folks, but for really creating the elements for success and all the wraparound services that are necessary. Um, as a financial institution, we have some experience with you know, thinking about different alternative um, uh, elements for underwriting loans. We've developed things like um, for borrowers that we serve who don't have social security numbers and who may be undocumented, um, we're able to look at things like whether or not they pay their utility bills on time for six months to assess their credit worthiness. And so we have some experience working with folks who are outside the mainstream um, and having that trust and um, that connection with the folks at the Runway Project and with Uptima was really the key and the core to us moving forward in some of these conversations. They were not always easy conversations to have because as a financial institution, you know, where, where Ronnie's kind of looking at it from the needs of the entrepreneur, we want to be supportive of that goal 1,000%, but we also need to be um, really aware of what risks we're putting our financial institution and our members at. And so in terms of the collateral requirement um, that Ronnie raised, you know, we knew that the borrowers weren't going to be able to put up a personal guarantee or, or put out a loan on their home or something like that. Um, and so we had to be creative. We have a product that we offer call, called a share secured loan, which is um, a loan that's guaranteed by a personal guarantee. And um, we knew that that wasn't going to be the right product, but we kind of um, recalibrated that product so that um, we were able to offer the type of loan that Ronnie mentioned, you know, a loan between most of our the loans that we've deployed, um, 26 loans so far have been in the ten dollars to $20,000 range. And those loans, in order for us to have made them at a 4% interest rate, flat interest rate, after um, you know, a, a one and a half to two year interest only period, we needed to mitigate our risk by um, lowering our overhead costs. Because we don't do underwriting for small business loans, we were able to outsource that underwriting to um, the folks who knew the borrower really well. And we're able to um, use uh, elements outside the five C's to judge whether or not this was, um, you know, going to be a, a successful borrower if they had all the right supports. And we also had to protect our risk by raising um, money in a collateral fund through philanthropic sources. And so that was really what allowed us by having 100% collateral on our pilot is a five-year pilot to deploy $500,000 um, to entrepreneurs. We're fully deployed at this point. And we were able um, to support Runway Project in raising that $500,000 collateral fund so that the risks to the financial institution were minimized. Um, yeah. I think it's important to point out here that the loan fund itself was established through the sale of CDs, certificate deposits, which are NCUA insured products. And um, that allows us to democratize how the capital flows into the loan fund. Um, institutions, individual investors, my grandma could, could um, invest mm -hmm. in this loan fund um, with a minimum of, what, $500 mm -hmm. in the CD and get above market rate of returns per view. What is, um, what is the rate of return right now? The rate of return, mm -hmm. well, we, um, for this product, we created a specialty CD mm -hmm. um, that was a five-year CD at a 2.5% interest return. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, that's a, a pretty competitive pro product on the market compared to other similar CDs. And um, we, we were working with mission-aligned investors, and so it was not very difficult to get people to buy into to that sort of um, investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the innovative uses of, of, of capital here, democratizing um, the capital flowing into the loan fund through a certificate of deposit, um, and then backstopping that with a collateral fund to make sure that the investors in the certificate of deposit were, pr were protected through um, the credit union. Um, the other um, portion of funding that we needed to raise was for operations. Um, and so we needed to be able to raise the money in order to 
um, establish an a underwriting committee um, and underwriting process um, to do credit analysis in the way that we were doing it, which is a really more of a consultative approach. So basically um, what we're doing is that we're taking one of Optima's business advisors, actually me at this point, and um, I'm doing this, this underwriting process where I'm advising the entrepreneur at the same time that I'm looking at their numbers and their business plan and putting together a, a credit memo. And I'm sharing with them every step of the way what it is that I'm looking at, why I'm looking at it, what, does it have on, what impact does it have on their business, and um, how they can use that information going forward in their business. And so this is a very high touch, transparent, collaborative underwriting process. Um, we, I also prepare them for a credit committee meeting where they're expected to come in and present their business um, to this, um, this community credit um, committee that's comprised of um, Conda Mason, myself, Yui Uno from ICA Fun Good Jobs, and uh, Nina Robinson. And, um, and you know, in this credit committee, they present their business. They actually have to do a pitch um, just you know, so that they hone their skills on presenting their business. Um, but, you know, as far as the, the Q&A of that credit committee, we're, we're really focusing on, you know, what is it that we can help you with in this business? What are your motivations behind, behind this business? And how can we support you in building this business? Um, so that when they come out of that, they feel more confident about their business. Whether they get the loan or not, they, they have gone through a process that has added rigor to to their business and, and help them to de develop their business model. Um, and then what we do is we pre-approve those loans um, and send them to self-help um, to complete the process at the branch where they start to build a relationship with self-help and all the other services that self-help provides. You wanna talk a little bit about that? Sure, I, mm -hmm. I was um, also gonna add that I think part of the trust that was established is that we have very um, clear processes in place for when um, credit memos are provided and you know that self helps is able to see all the documentation that's collected from a business there's a steering committee that self help is a part of and we meet on a quarterly basis with um, the other folks on the steering committee including Ronnie and Conda and Nina and other folks mentioned and so there's a lot of transparency around you know what's happening with the borrowers um, whether or not there are any issues that we need to be aware of and just the fact that the business advising has such a regular schedule mitigates the risk that you know a borrower is not going to be supported if something were to come up. Um, in terms of what you raised, Ronnie, when um, the borrower comes to self-help, you know, at that point, we know that they've been through the process with Ronnie and the Runway Project already, and so um, given the fact that the, our trust is in them to do the underwriting well and to make sure that the borrower is in the right stage of accessing this early stage funding, we fund that loan. They're connected to our West Oakland branch. Um, the loan is funded within a couple of days and they can begin to move on with their business. Um, we'd love to you know, explore ways to get folks more ingrained into our credit union products and services, but I think you know, what we learn is that um, most early stage entrepreneurs are, are pretty all encompassed with their business. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where they are right now and that's totally fine with us. We're, I'm excited to have them introduced to our products, but, um, but they're really, we just want them to know that we're there to support them if they need us. Yeah, and we have had a couple of borrowers access other services through self-help like debt consolidation <coughs> and um, the Vita tax services. Mm -hmm. Um, have been super helpful um, for our entrepreneurs. Um, on, the, on the back end of the loan, I mentioned that we do a lot of business advising. And um, so what we can see with these entrepreneurs, we've you know, almost fully deployed this $500,000 fund. Um, so we have to date uh, made 26 loans um, for 487,000 of capital. And, um, and so we only have you know, one more loan that we can make at this point. Uh, the borrowers are seeing immediate impacts of these loans. So this has allowed them to, instead of pay for their inventory off of their credit cards, to be able to make that order and, and feel secure that they've got um, friendly capital to be able to, to pay for that. Um, it has also allowed them to buy vehicles. So we have one you know, business who is a mobile floral truck. Um, she was able to buy that truck 
um, through this loan. Um, another one has been able, to, as a delivery services business, he's been able to buy their van for deliveries with this loan. Um, we're also seeing a category of, um, of borrowers who are in this period where they're trying to raise larger amounts of capital, say a couple hundred thousand dollars, and um, they're not able to access that capital quick enough. So one of the interesting things about this is that Runway has also become a bridge loan in, in effect um, for these borrowers that may be at you know three four hundred thousand dollars of revenue trying to get you know fifty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of loans or other types of capital um, they are able to access twenty um, to be able to do some things in their business and the business support that will allow them to unlock that capital um, in in various ways that are aligned with the mission of their business um, so some ways that we, we we've been able to do that is you know working with like GW Chu of Something Better Foods and helping him with um, partnerships and uh, revenue-based loans on top of the runway loan that he, he received. Um, others are you know, working with, others, with CDFIs in the community to access additional loan funds. And then we're also talking to people about equity and opportunity zone funds. Mm -hmm. and, and so this allows us to bring to bear a lot of skills um, that um, that the entrepreneurs wouldn't have otherwise received when looking for funding. And, and so, um, you know, with that, we're seeing uh, that our borrowers have, you know, raised about $840,000, $850,000 of capital um, on top of the loans that they received through Runway Project. And they've been able to generate about $2.6 million of revenue collectively. And over 50 plus jobs in their community. Um, so that's, that's quite a significant impact for 26 borrowers. Mm -hmm. And in terms mm -hmm. of our um, loan performance, we've got 26 borrowers, we've had no charge offs to date, and our first borrower um, has just entered the, uh, the amortization schedule so that her interest only period has ended and, and now we're starting to see what that curve might look like. And, um, you know, we're really excited. We really feel like with the support of our partners, um, that's going to allow us to do um, do more lending and do more work like this. But also, we we recognize that this is really just the tip of the iceberg. The ten to twenty thousand dollars we can lend to um, a handful of entrepreneurs is there's much more need out there that's greater than what we can currently provide. And you know, we're trying to work together to see if there are other things that we can do to meet the needs, not just of other early stage entrepreneurs, but the folks that we've supported to date to help them get their business to the next level. Um, and it, it's really expanded, I think, self-help's way of thinking about um, uh, how, we, how we support traditionally disadvantaged groups from accessing financing and how we use um, s other sources and partners like philanthropy and you know low interest low interest um, loans PRIs and grants how we use those in different ways how can we be creative um, if we can be creative in underwriting and protect some of our risk what are some other ways we can work with others um, who also have may, may have some capital um, in in unique ways yeah so are you ready to put this into practice the <laughs> runway way <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Perby, do you mind um, yes. uh, writing up? So what I'm going to do is give you a case study of one of our borrowers. And uh, what I would love for you all to do in each of your tables is to think about um, what would you do with this borrower? How would you approach lending to this borrower or not lending to this borrower? Why, why not? Um, what would you, how would you look at that lending to this borrower? Um, what factors would you consider? And um, I know this is going to be pretty rapid fire. This underwriting process usually takes a lot longer than 20 or 30 minutes. <laughs> but just to give you a taste for, for what we're looking at here. Um, so the borrower that I'd like you to take a look at right now is a um, vegan food company. And um, they have been in existence for maybe about um, three months before they came to us. And they have, um, they're, they're formally incarcerated 
individual um, who has, you know, gotten into a mindfulness practice and, um, you know, through that mindfulness practice and uh, all the other ways that he's been changing his life, got into becoming a vegan. And um, he saw that there was not a lot of vegan barbecue alternatives out there. And so he wanted to create a business where he could serve vegan barbecue. And um, he has a couple of people that he was working with to secure the, the meat alternative for that barbecue. And um, he just started off kind of winging it by uh, going out and making food and uh, selling it at farmers markets and doing some catering gigs. He didn't have a real good pricing structure for these catering gigs and um, he was basically trying to figure out which farmers markets would be most viable for him. Um, he didn't have anything like QuickBooks in place from the beginning. Um, he was basically tracking his financial information by use of receipts and um, you know, so no real systems in place. He didn't really understand how to put together financial projections for his business. Um, you know, he was able to articulate his plans for a business and wanting to move from a farmer's market in, into a food truck and then ultimately into his own restaurant space. Um, he knew that he wanted to scale this pretty big and pretty fast, um, but he didn't have any capital to be able to move from where he was with the farmer's markets and the catering gigs um, into a food truck. And he knew that he needed about 70000 of capital to do that, um, to buy that truck, to equip it, to make sure he had the commercial kitchen, to, um, you know, all the permitting and everything. And, um, and he was working with another CDFI to potentially get um, 50 of that. Uh, but that money was moving very slow. And, um, and he needed 20000 just to kind of get his bearings. Um, and so he came to Runway Project. And um, does anyone have any questions about this entrepreneur before you get started? Happy to answer, like, answer anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Why twenty k? Like, how would that help this entrepreneur? Yeah. Well, he needed to move out into his own kitchen space because he was like sharing a kitchen. Like a friend of his was allowing him to use the kitchen, and um, he needed to move into his own kitchen space. He needed to be able to hire some staff, um, so that he could free himself up a little bit to work on the food truck concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on this entrepreneur? Yeah. What, what's his revenue stream? Um, so he was, at this point, when he came to, to Runway, he was making about $15,000 a month. But he didn't have a sense for what his profits were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the entrepreneur's background, mm -hmm. professionally, otherwise? He was a musician. He was uh, formerly a gangster rapper. And, um, and then he, like, uh, when he was a returning citizen, he got into mindfulness, and he was a mindfulness educator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is 20000 long enough, right, enough to get him to the $50,000 CDFI loan? Uh, that that's that? what, yeah, that's a question that I have for you all. <laughs> <laughs> How would you look at this loan, um, this $20,000 loan to this entrepreneur? Um, and, you know, would you or would you not uh, provide a $20,000 loan, and why or why not? Mm. Um, and uh, if you all would be willing to work in tables and come up with your, your ideas, and then we could share out um, through each of these tables. Is that cool? One mm -hmm. more question. Yeah, one more What's question. What's your relationship with the CDFI and loaning the money? Um, we have a relationship with the CDFI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, any other questions before we get started? How long have you known him? Uh, just met him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he came to the runway project from a community member. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
All right. So how much time do we have here? Um, Ten minutes? Yeah. Ten minutes in groups good enough for you? And then we can share out? Yeah. No, we don't know uh, what his profitability is at this point. You said 15,000, right? Is this monthly revenue? 15,000 is monthly revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah? If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. All right. Are you all ready to come back together as a group and share out? Um, I would love to hear what your table thought of about this opportunity to lend to this entrepreneur. Um, would you lend to this entrepreneur? Why or why not? What other information do you feel like you need in order to make that decision? Um, who wants to go first? Oh, come on. Go on, Greg. Yeah. Um, so our group decided that um, we would want to lend Who wants to go next? We go next. Mm -hmm. So we felt, um, and you guys all speak up with it. We were, um, we felt like we needed some more information before we could move forward with a decision. So we wanted to know, for example, if he was carrying any other debt. Um, we didn't want to overburden him with additional debt if he wasn't ready to mm -hmm. uh, to make those payments. And then uh, we also wanted to know if he had a secondary source of income, maybe his job. Uh, that could help make uh, the loan payments uh, if he ran into trouble with, the, uh, with revenue of the business. Um, what else? Oh, we wanted to look at his financials. Yeah, we wanted to get a sense of his uh, financials, and we understand that he doesn't have QuickBooks or any systems in place for tracking, but at least to look at the receipts so we could get a sense of kind of what revenue was coming in. Mm -hmm. So we, we were, um, we thought it was a great idea, um, and, uh, Definitely wanted to learn more about mm -hmm. his business. Mm -hmm. Great. I think we're also talking about uh, similar to you, is making sure that he has access to other resources so that he can set up a, a, a much more um, thoughtful business model. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Thank you. Who's next? Hi, I'm Michael. Um, I think we, we didn't fully make a decision, we were leaning towards yes. Um, felt like they have like 15k in revenue in three months of operations. Really impressive way to, to start a, a business. And we felt like there's a lot of potential there. There's some things that we would want to know more about. Um, I mean, some were like, hey, like opportunity cost for the end of this fund. Like, if we fund this, then what does that mean for you know, like what 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 else are we potentially missing out on? Mm -hmm. um, and and also kind of understanding your little worried that this like 20K, if the end goal was a food truck, and that 70K, and this 20K isn't really going towards that, like are we gonna be able to, like is the entrepreneur gonna be able to make enough money, you know, with the, this 20K, hiring employees, having more space to, to do, you know, bring in new customers, things like that, for, 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 for this to be helpful to get to that end goal. Mm -hmm. So I think that was like, the, that was the main thing that was kind of like our, you want to ask a little bit more about and then just and then dig into a little bit more and I, I, we leaned yes, mm -hmm. given the potential and, and, and just the, how impressive it was for, for this business to be doing, growing so much, mm -hmm. so quickly. Great, thank you. Two tables in the back, who wants to go next? If there was a period of time, like okay, so if yes, there was a period of time to 
um, where the individual could work toward getting systems and infrastructure in place where they wouldn't actually have to repay the loan in that period of time. And that if they could, you know, get to that place of having the infrastructure in place, then maybe take advantage of um, having an additional loan where they're actually making up enough money to be able to get into the cycle of repayment. Mm -hmm. So kind of leveraging that. That was one thing. Great, thank you. And then the last table in the back there? Yeah, we were actually pretty interested in the actual small cap fees with the business plan. Um, I sit on the marketing and communications team, which is a big community foundation. I think, in terms of like what would be significant about this, is like what are the elements that you pull out from the storytelling perspective to help mm -hmm. kind of increase my capital? Many questions around like, how are they investing back? They have their own garden, maybe located in the fruit bell where they're sourcing their own produce. Um, is that going back into the business model? Um, are they hiring other foreign incarcerated people? Are they paying them fair wages? Like, what are these questions that you can help kind of like elevate the story? So, I think in terms of like the way you were coming from, that would be close there. Mm -hmm. Great. These are all really great questions. You want to hear how Runway approached it? Uh, we did work with him on just trying to reconstruct, trying to construct what his profitability may look like, um, as far as um, you know, going, you know, having somebody work with him, a mentor work with him, and going through receipts and, and tracking that information, so we could get to some level of information there. Um, not complete, but complete enough in order for us to to take a look at that. Um, we did make a loan to this entrepreneur. Um, we did we did it on the basis of the strength of the business because um, you know f uh, fifteen thousand of revenue and it was profitable, including him paying himself at that point in time, and um, and he didn't need a secondary source of income. The business. Uh, has been wildly successful. He had a, an interest in hiring other formerly incarcerated individuals in his business, um, also hiring family members, um, so it is a family-owned business. Um, he is working with um, other community members, other runway borrowers, and other community members um, around how he sources the, the food. Um, so he is a significant contributor to the community and um, as far as his, his vegan food and his mindfulness is concerned and um, you know character wise he you know he was like I'm gonna make this happen um, I have I have seen some things and I'm gonna make this happen and so we felt very strongly about him uh, and and being able to, to repay the loan and and you know actually make things happen and we also knew that he was craving business support and so um, the idea that he didn't have his financials in place and didn't know how to go about doing that um, didn't scare us because we could help him on the back end of that um, you know we could connect him with bookkeepers we could teach you know show him how to set up his books in a way that he can manage his business and he has a bookkeeper now and he has a wildly successful business he pivoted um, he has a restaurant location and he's frequently sold out so um, he did get that that other money from the CDFI after us and um, and um, he's, he's a, an amazing <coughs> example of um, a business that had immediate impact um, from the runway project had some opportunities come up after the runway project where he pivoted um, and was able to to get into a situation where he's been wildly successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where is this restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> What's the name? Mm -hmm. um, can I tell them? I yeah. So. Vegan Mob. Okay. Okay. Over um, near Lake Merritt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be in the lake. Uh, so he took over the Lake Merritt Bakery right. spot. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So go check him out. <laughs> he makes amazing food, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how long from the point that you met him did it take for you to go through his financials and eventually get him the first one? 
Yeah, it's a great question. We want to make sure that we're getting money into the hands of entrepreneurs really quickly. Um, so we, um, you know, we, because we had limited amount of funds to deploy, you know, we set these schedules where we wanted to see an application come in by a certain date. And then we had a credit committee meeting already set. And so there might be a week or two period in between the time that the application was due and the credit committee in which I was working with him to make sure he, had, he was prepared and that I had all the information that I needed to create a credit memo and, and provide that credit memo to the loan committee and that he was prepared to go to the loan committee. And, um, and then, you know, as far as deploying the funds, once we pre-approved, it's a pretty quick process after that. They just have to complete the process with self-help and um, it doesn't take any more than like one or two days if they're able to get in there like right <coughs> away. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to us to have a really quick turnaround time. Mm -hmm. We don't want entrepreneurs to sit there waiting for money and saying, oh, you know, stringing them along around the approval processes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. I have a more general question, mm -hmm. not about this delicious mm -hmm. looking food, but I'm, <laughs> I'm curious more broadly if you have this you have cohort of 26 folks who have qualified mm -hmm. for loans, both from a access to sort of business synergy perspective and peer learning perspective, like are you doing work to connect them and share best practices and do internal mentoring and networking? Yeah, well like I said, there's the the one on one business advising that they have every week. Um, and then they have these success circles where they meet um, twice a month um, in the first two years of their loan. So that connection is that peer learning. And so like right now, a lot of our success circles are focusing on holiday sales plans. And they're sharing all the resources with each other. Um, so there's no holding back. People are like, I have this resource. You need to know about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, do you see a role for government in this scenario, like in terms of like, I'm just thinking of creating pipelines and connecting people because I feel like I work in the city of San Francisco and we have tons of entrepreneurs and there's like all these issues around people getting money in a timely fashion and I feel like part of it is because we don't have like the systems in place between the different entities to be able to you know connect people through and communicate in a transparent fashion mm -hmm. um, so I'm just curious if you see there being a role for, for government and mm -hmm. in general yeah you know there's a couple of roles um, for government one you know through their offices of economic development um, identifying entrepreneurs that could be a pipeline into this these loan programs um, you know two you know government oh you know office of economic development often puts out RFPs um, seeking mm -hmm. to fund um, business assistance and um, you know ha you know having um, having us bid on those and really looking at us seriously um, to be able to provide that support either on the front end or back end. Um, and there's also probably opportunities to help um, city governments manage uh, revolving loan funds um, and have them deployed to African American entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also any? wonder if there's opportunity for the city. I've worked for the city of New York for a mm -hmm. year and um, they wanted to start a program where they were utilizing um, minority women and um, uh, minority and women business owners as service providers, as people that they were they were using to cater and clean and do all the things that the city needed mm -hmm. to do. So that could be another source for business. Yeah, definitely that procurement angle. So we are working with a lot of the borrowers on um, supplier diversity and, and making sure they get that, um, you know, those those um, certifications and that they are um, seeing the, the, the um, RFPs that are coming from the government and are supporting them on bidding on this as well. So access to markets is definitely another way that government can participate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, this is a great conversation. Um, I'm wondering about the lessons you've learned and how they can be applied when the business gets a little bit more established mm -hmm. and the capital asks are larger. Mm -hmm. What are the things that we can learn from this great example and move it upstream in the financial system? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really great question because um, a lot of our borrowers have had to access additional capital. So 
Um, that can range between 10,000 Kiva loan all the way up to 250,000 SBA loans and, um, and even into equity offerings and um, you know, looking at opportunity zones. And so with, um, with that, you know, we have a team of skilled advisors that have um, a lot of background. I, I actually have a lot of background in investment banking and finance, and so do a number of other people on our team. So when we seek advisors to deploy in the one-on-one -on -one advisory with Runway Project, we make sure that we're matching them with the type of advisor that's going to support them in that additional capital raising. Um, we also, um, you know, have a lot of experience in, you know, looking at impact investing and making sure that whatever capital they're seeking to access is aligned with the mission, vision, values, goals, and legacy that they want to create. So let's say they want to convert their business into a cooperative. We're not going to send them down the path of trying to do a, a safe note or convertible note in equity. Uh, we're going to, you know, look at other alternatives and how could that cooperative conversion work and maybe even connect them with our partners that do that type of work. And, um, and so it really takes an ecosystem here and, you know, knowing what are the right partners to bring in. Um, so we're doing a lot of navigating and triage here as well. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of just capital as well, um, that's something else that we're trying to explore as this five, as this pilot, the, the funding for this pilot is coming to a close. What is the next phase for supporting these borrowers? At self-help, we do um, commercial lending, but those are generally larger dollar loans um, that have that are real estate backed. And so until and unless the entrepreneurs have you know a physical space that is there that they can um, we can collateralize for a loan, well, there may be a gap there in financing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm from Business School of Wells Fargo, and I just had a general question. I was just trying to wrap my head around the model a bit. Um, so, can you walk me through where, what is one way project's role versus a team of business boot camp and then self credit? So, are, are these, it sounds like the group. People come into the boot camp, they get the training, then they go to runway, and mm -hmm. then runway connects them to self credit. Self credit meeting. is that? Do I have that correct? Um, partially. <laughs> so, um, self help federal credit union. Um, raised money, uh, worked with us to raise money through certificates of d deposit through the specialty CD that they have and earmarked. No, worked with Runway Project um, and Optima to raise money um, in the certificate of deposit earmarked for lending to African American entrepreneurs in Alameda and Contra Costa County. Um, Runway Project uh, raised the collateral fund to backstop that, um, that loan fund so that the entrepreneurs wouldn't have to do any personal guarantees or uh, put forth any collateral. And then um, the third pot of money which was raised by Runway was the operating capital through philanthropic sources. Um, so that's like the establishment of the loan fund and, and operating capital. Um, from a service provider perspective, uh, Runway Project um, holds the underwriting process. Um, so it's established a steering committee, and the steering committee is appointed a credit committee. And the credit committee is comprised of people from within the community, um, including a representative from Optima, a representative uh, from Runway Project team, and other members of the community. Um, and that that credit committee um, appoints a credit analyst, um, which then goes through that underwriting process. That credit analyst tends to be um, a business advisor from our team at this point and um, that that person takes the uh, entrepreneur through the underwriting process um, and shepherds them through the credit committee. Um, the credit committee makes a pre-approval and then sends them to self-help to um, complete the process and have funds deployed and then there's a handoff to an Optima business advisor um, to provide post-loan business support in the form of that one-on-one -on -one business advising and support circles. Um, 
Now, the pipeline of entrepreneurs are coming from all over the place. We have a very deep pipeline. A good chunk of that pipeline is coming through Optimus training programs, um, but they're also coming from ICA Fund Good Jobs. They're coming from Central Community Partners and uh, Main Street Launches EIR program and you know all, all of these programs. Some of them aren't even coming through a program because like the one that we just talked about here came through a community referral. Mm -hmm. And so when you're signing up for the, the program, it's technical assistance as well as the as the money. As mm -hmm. well as the money. So right. that's the way mm -hmm. that was one of my questions. Mm-hmm. You know, there's other lenders out there. Um, so I was just trying to figure out how that works, but, but that yeah. answer that. Yeah, and then the technical assistance part, we do end up directing them to other lenders to layer on more capital or like gotcha. you know, or to other fine you know, other partners that may not be lenders, equity partners. Mm -hmm. Um, there hasn't been an instance. Um, basically, and in Pervy, you can you know talk a little bit more about this. Is that uh, the underwriting process and the pre-approval is assigned to the credit committee, and um, and so their self-help is relying on the credit committee's um, expertise and relationship with the borrower. Um, and the only way that it might not go through is if the borrower doesn't pass a fraud check um, or you know some other you know regulatory thing on the back end at self-help. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that it couldn't happen, mm -hmm. but because of the structure that we talked about and the fact that um, you know because self-help here in California doesn't have. Um, small business underwriting team and, and we wanted to outsource that to um, Optima and to Runway to be able to do that that work and make the referrals to us um, that helps us lower our overhead costs that also you know we have the collateral fund to mitigate our risk but in general when we receive a referral that's a go from the credit committee we fund that loan Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to actually going to a credit committee, um, we're typically not taking anybody there unless we think there's a high percentage chance that they're going to pass through that credit committee. Um, we, we just don't want to take people through you know, this, this process in order to, to say no to them. And, um, and so there have been people in the pipeline who were interested in runway project, and um, you know we, we've had initial conversations with them, and you know have turned them away for you know one reason or another. What are some of those reasons? Uh, yeah, you know, some of those reasons might be they might not uh, be open um, and committed to ha receiving this technical assistance on the back end, where someone might think they know everything um, when they don't. Mm -hmm. That's a big reason why we might turn someone away. Um, yeah, or that their their business model is really not viable in this market. Um, that's another reason why we might turn somebody away. Mm -hmm. And are there also folks that have mm -hmm. come to the credit committee that um, may be turned away just based on timing? You mean timing of like deployment of funds? Yes. Um, at this stage, like I said, we're almost fully deployed. So at, at this point, we, we're going to have a backlog of demand um, that we can't fill at the moment. Um, but we are working on ways um, to increase the size of the fund or um, working with other partners 
uh, you know, another partnership that, we, that we're working on is the Real People's Fund that was announced at COCAP and SOCAP this year. Uh, um, so that's another way that, that we might be deploying funds in the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have a question about the technical mm -hmm. assistance piece. Um, I'm Laura from with Working Solutions, and we're a volume micro lender here in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. uh, we put 160 loans into the community last year, uh, micro loans from 5,000 to 50,000. And um, we offer technical assistance on the back end after mm -hmm. the loan as well. Now, our technical assistance is focused in that uh, first year primarily, but we also offer up to the full five years of the term of the loan. Your, from what I understand, with your technical assistance, you're meeting with the borrowers once, is it once a week mm -hmm. in the first year, and mm -hmm. then once every other week in the second and third year? How do you um, uh, juggle the time, that time commitment that the borrowers have with, with your organization and the demands on their time as entrepreneurs? Like, how do you get them to show up to their meetings, and yeah. uh, do you mm -hmm. have any challenges with that? Um, for the most part, we, you know, it's pretty easy because they want that assistance. We're a thought partner for them. And, um, and so they look forward to those meetings. They have an agenda for those meetings. They, you know, we use those meetings to help, you know, help them understand things in their business and, and make decisions in their business. So, um, you know, that it, it is probably, when we did a survey of borrowers um, last year, that was probably the, one of the most pivotal pieces that, that they were receiving. Mm -hmm. Ani, do you want to share at all about the runway project national landscape? Yeah, so we have a, a few minutes left. So um, the runway project started off as a pilot program here in Oakland in, in collaboration with Self Help Federal Credit Union and Optima Business Boot Camp. And, um, those of you who have been tracking us has, have probably seen that we're now starting to expand nationally. So the, the overall objective was to be able to do this on a national scale. Uh, we recently announced a partnership with Berkshire Bank in Boston um, to establish our second loan fund um, in the Boston area um, using the same terms and underwriting practices and um, and you know we're currently in the stage where we're um, we're hiring people in Boston. Um, just made a couple offers to some people there um, in order to start deploying funds early first quarter of next year. Um, so there are opportunities for um, people to invest in the certificates of deposit um, that will um, be deployed in the Boston area as well as philanthropic opportunities to support uh, the operations of the Boston program. And then, you know, we're continuing our conversations with self-help about expanding beyond, beyond the 500,000 pilot here in Oakland. Um, and as I mentioned, we're in conversations with the Real People's Fund to be deploying the smaller dollar lo loans um, under 50,000 um, through that fund as well. Mm -hmm. So we have some exciting collaborations that will um, will take this a lot further and, um, and be able to serve the community um, hopefully nationally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, James Lee, I just had um, questions about the Three funds you mentioned, so there's a five hundred thousand dollar pool that gets deployed, and then there's an additional five hundred thousand dollar collateral pool that mm -hmm. is, is used to mitigate the risk, really reduce it to zero, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's a third fund that funds the operation of these track run services after care. That's right. Meetings. And how much is that? Um, that's roughly two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand a year. So that's mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. Think of that as a typical fund structure. That's a mm -hmm. 30, 30 points mm -hmm. on, a, on a million dollars. Mm -hmm. right? So yeah. instead of a 20, uh, mm -hmm. 20 or two plus 20, it's, it's yeah. Like and, and basically, that that continues to reduce the risk to zero. So, right. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so you, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. you replicate that same structure in Boston. Mm -hmm. With the exception of the collateral fund. So in Boston, uh, we will not have a collateral fund. That's what we needed here 
um, with self-help to get out the door, um, we found that um, you know that's difficult to raise. Those of you who have tried to raise a collateral fund, and with all the risk mitigation strategies we have with the technical assistance, we don't really need to have a collateral fund. So, in Boston, um, that collateral fund is completely eliminated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's no loan loss reserve. It would be with the bank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I've been told their time's up. Yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you all, all for being here. Mm -hmm.